We are here at San Diego Comic-Con to talk about True Noir, an upcoming audio drama, and I am talking with Chris Carr. And I'm curious, uh, can you just tell me how you joined this project? Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm Robert Meyer Burnett is basically my work husband. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with him. I love him so much. Anything he does, I want to be part of. So he was doing this proof of concept. My husband and I, my real husband, mm -hmm. were voice actors in it. We got to play like three different parts. And luckily, that went really well. And so once he got all these amazing actors, he still brought me on board to play a lovely lead in this. So that's kind of how I jumped in. You're playing one, one of the lead characters? Yeah. Uh, wait, who's the lead character? Is it? So, well, I'm I'm gonna be Nathan Heller's love interest in this. Oh wow! Yeah, which is really cool. I play a character named Marianne Beam. I'm one of the few fictional characters in this. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is wonderfully grounded in actual history, mm -hmm. and so the kind of fun thing here is I gotta do a little bit more of whatever I want since there's no rules for her, mm -hmm. um, and just kind of jump in and sh serve as that kind of moral thread for Nathan. Where do you uh, look for inspiration when you're doing something that is you know, just your voice? Where Ooh. Well, I predominantly work in voiceover, so I'm mm -hmm. super lucky to work in this medium. For this kind of stuff, it was rewatching a lot of 1940s films, talk with Rob about how far he wanted me to take that kind of transatlantic thing, how affected he wanted the speech to be, mm -hmm. and just studying those patterns. I also have a really easy cheat code here because my husband's a dialect coach, so uh, I can just be like, hey, am I doing this right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which looks really nice. Is it any different working in something that's an audio drama where you know there's not going to be any visual um, to go along with, whereas like, you know, in animation, you know, something will eventually be there. Is it different uh, for voice acting at all? A little bit. Just because in this you already know the Foley's going to kind of help create the environment, whereas in animation you know there's going to be those visuals. Mm -hmm. The approach is always the same, though. It's kind of a... Do you play D&D? &D? Uh, I don't. Okay. She's played it a little Okay, you play Dungeons & Dragons, though. Okay, so a really great dungeon master like really immerses you in it and gives you all the details, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the same thing with voice acting. You're never just in front of a microphone. You're there with your scene partner, and you have to think about the room you're in, how far away you are from each other, the ambient noises and all that. And once you have that theater of the mind happening, it makes everything else so much easier. The nice thing on like on camera acting is all of that's already there for you. So you get to just be like, oh yeah, of course. I'm I'm you know, in this bar and there's smoke everywhere, whereas in voiceover you have to kind of create that in your own brain. That makes sense. Um, when you uh, think picture someone listening to this in the future, you know, I know when I listen to a like a podcast, I listen to the John Campia podcast quite often. Oh yay, thank um, you for watching. Yeah, of course. Um, like do you picture like the ideal scenario for someone watching a, an audio drama to be just sitting there immersed in it, or are they multitasking, you know, sort of like with podcasts? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, most of the time we are, right? You mm -hmm. put it on, I do it for my commute for Campia, right? Mm -hmm. Where I'm in that hour and a half ride. And so usually you're in your car or you're, you know, doing dishes, you're cleaning your house, you're doing something else. This is one that I would love to encourage people to really sit down and just hang out. Um, I would pour yourself a glass of bourbon, put your headphones on, and really just enjoy it. What we really want is like for people to kind of just sit in a dark room and listen to this so you feel like you're fully immersed in it because the Foley that they've done in this really puts you actually in each scene.